what are the main chronic issues that you're seeing with people with their fleet? Is it feet? Is it plantar fasciitis? Is it something else? Or? I would say the top ones that I see is definitely going to be plantar fasciitis, uh, fasciitis, fasciitis, fasciosis. Mm -hmm. um, the fasciosis part of it would be really when you start to get into this chronic presentation. So let's say maybe you've had heel pain for um, over six months, just constantly for over six months. Technically, that's then considered fasciosis. Another way that fasciosis can present that most people don't think about is where it wax and wanes. So you'll get a flare up, you'll calm it down. So you'll put up the fires, what I call it. Uh, six weeks later, it'll flare up again. Then you're, you do your little regimen, it'll go back down, flares up again. And you essentially do this over and over. And I've had patients that would have waxing and waning plantar heel pain for five years. Mm -hmm they still consider that this acute plantar fasciitis because they're just thinking of each flare up. However, when I see them, oh, I have okay. degeneration, thickening, sometimes partial tearing of the plantar fascia. And that's actually considered a chronic plantar fasciosis that I treat differently. Um, so that's a common one. Another big one, of course, forefoot is going to be bunions. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Lots of bunions, questions around bunions. Can I correct bunions? Can I reverse bunions? Mm -hmm. Similar to bunions would be a hallux limitus or rigidus. So if they just don't have range of motion in the big toe joint and they don't understand why they don't have a bunion, but they don't have range of motion. Mm -hmm. So there's something that's causing that arthritis and that contracture in the joint. Uh, and then they typically will feel that elsewhere in the body because they change the way that they walk. Mm -hmm. Other ones, hammer toes, of course, neuromas. Another big one would be neuromas. Um, and then one last one that is very common is lateral foot pain. Mm -hmm. So that's something on the outside of the foot. Uh, it's actually very highly searched because I think people don't understand it when they have pain on the outside of their foot, which is called lateral foot pain. Usually it's just a perineal tendinitis or tendinosis. Mm -hmm. Is that is lateral foot pain? Do you see that a lot with athletes or people who are more into uh, health and fitness a lot? I do. And where you could see it is similar to the the client or the individual that mm -hmm. presents with IT band issues because the lateral line, right? Your lateral line from your outside hip, your glutes, your TFL coming into your IT band, it actually blends into your perineals. And then your pronus brevis inserts onto the side of your foot on your styloid process or that bump on the side of your foot. So you can get tightness pulling at the styloid all the way into your glutes and your TFL, that whole lateral line. Mm -hmm. It'll talk to the patient either down in the foot, on the side of the knee, in the outside of the hip. It, it just depends on the individual where it's going to talk or show face. Yeah, I've I've personally had some of that lateral foot pain before, and I I don't wish that on anybody yeah. from it. And it's tough because it, it really does kind of affect everything. I mean, our feet is our connection to the earth. So I I thought it came from doing more of um, some heavy squats because I found like some stuff of doing heavy barbell work, like heavy deadlifts, heavy squats, and stuff like that. It can be. Um, like it challenges your feet quite a bit on a strength base of there. Yeah, no, 100%. And if you don't have the sufficient range of motion, someone can easily compensate and not realize it. Mm -hmm. Or they are trying to correct for, let's say, like a knee valgus. So if your knees are falling in or collapsing inward or your feet do, a lot of people will tear the ground apart. So they'll mm -hmm. do kind of an action of tearing the ground apart. I personally am not a fan of that cue because when you do that, you go right into your lateral line and you're essentially mm, okay. doing this frontal plane correction that is high tension loading mm -hmm. your entire lateral fascial line, which could be your pronus brevis at its insertion. It could be along the knee. It could be all the way into the hip. So I try to avoid that degree of um, fascial activation as a way to control, let's say, foot position. Sure. What, what do you think would be a better approach versus because that tear the ground apart is a big cue that is in speed and strength work. Yep. yep. It's it's a easy cue that is quick for people who do not understand 
joint coupling or yeah. integrated biomechanics. Very quick feed, very quick feedback for, for yeah, a beginner. Exactly. Um, really the way that you want to be correcting is a external rotation spiral. So you want to think about rotating all the way up into the hip and it's externally. So you, with your screwing the foot in the ground, that would be kind of the cue, but it's rotational in its action versus uh, moving to the side. So that's frontal plane. When you rotate, that's transverse plane. So I try to do a transverse plane correction versus a frontal plane. Mm, okay. Yeah. That's a really good point. That's completely different movement. When you get that spiraling position, we teach that in kind of finding your, uh, foot position and kettlebell mm -hmm. swings of kind of that yep. lock and rock of kind of find and yep. wedge through that position, kind of get that alignment there. That's beautiful. So you mentioned like the three pillars of foot health that you talked about. You talked about sensory, you know, input. Um, then you talked about the integrated strength and then foot recovery. The first one there is is curious when you say about sen the sensory stimulation from there. Can you explain a little bit about what that actually is? Yes, I love to talk about sensory of the feet <laughs> because it's a part that was actually not taught in podiatry school um, and is underappreciated as far as the influence it has on overall foot function. So when you think about strong feet, healthy feet, healthy feet, meaning healthy movement, you have to have not just mechanically sound feet, but you have to have sensorily stimulating feet.